this one is sketch another object and then the orthographic views with tools with dimensions. Um, I brought these two books again. One is the drawings, German drawings book. Um, first of all because they're just like amazingly beautiful drawings. Um, and you should look at that and just try to um, be really free in your sketching and uh, you know not worrying too much about being very precise uh, but just getting the, the basic shape um, together um, one of the one of the really um, hard things to do with some of these objects is that there are curves and so whatever the curves are you know around the object they're hard to visualize because there isn't really a feature there I mean unless for example, this picture really had lines, you know, like decorations going there. So what you want to do always is, is help yourself by creating those lines. Again, what they're called contour lines. Um, anyway. By the way, do a lot of little, um, or at least a few uh, side views, orthographic views of your objects, because you kind of need those to, even for yourself, to have like, oh, okay, that's six inches or something. That's, you know, maybe 10 inches. Okay, it's just good to have uh, as a reference. So on something like this, even though you have the general shape, and we kind of tend to, uh, you know, in our mind, sort of uh, maybe, you know, make it, in, make it up in our mind saying, okay, that's round. But it's really, it's hard to see unless, again, you do, uh, in this case, an ellipse to show that it's a cylindrical shape to begin with. Uh, he's doing even more ellipses. because it's showing how the picture is made up of these two circles, right? So he's trying to visualize that. Um, but then really it's just a series of ellipses at different heights. Um, and whenever you do that, also remember that it's good to know where the ellipses and the circles kind of general positions are. So for example, now by drawing this cross, Sorry that it's at an angle, guys, but otherwise I can't, <laughs> I can't show it. Um, let me do another one here a little bit. By doing this now, I'm establishing where that axis is, and that's where I'm, in, in this case, for example, I'm going to put the handle of the picture. Okay, otherwise it would be hard to know what this is uh, in relation to that circle. Anyway, take a, take a look at this book, and the nice thing about these drawings is it starts out kind of light. Um, I don't know if you use different pencils, but um, in any case, maybe just pressure, and then builds it up. And these are probably big drawings. I mean, my guess is at least, well, maybe, I don't know. But they could be 8.5 by 11, I don't know. But, um, and some of them are pretty heavy, like this one. But still. It works. Um, then the other draw, the other book that I have, which is the sketching book, um, which is more like for the rapid viz class, which I encourage you all to take, even though you might not be a product designer, because um, it really shows these different steps. And as I talked about the other day, you know, for each little part, especially if there are curves. You need to sort of lay out the framework of where those curves are. Uh, so this is a, I don't know, you could call it a little cube, maybe it's a little dice. And so how would you do that? Let's, and this shows how the corners really are an eighth of a sphere. If it's a straight round curve like those that you might find in an Apple product, for example. Um, let's just see. So if you start out with a cube and you know the corners around it, again it helps 
to do a little side view and say, oh, okay, I've got squares which are about this big everywhere, on all corners. Right? And you could start maybe bit by bit, instead of trying to do like a dice right away, well, maybe just do a simple shape that's like rounded only on one side, you know, to make it simple. So how would we do that? So we would put these squares on the corners, approximately in the right proportions. And you can see right now, I've already messed up because my space between the two squares is much bigger than this space between these two squares. Okay, so that means I have to do it a little bigger. And I'm now just going to emphasize that, okay, even though you probably wouldn't because otherwise that becomes too much part of the drawing. Um, now remember that your ellipses on this side are going to be the short x axis is going to go this way. Okay, that's the direction of the short axis, and the long axis is going to go this direction, which is perpendicular to the other axis. So when I draw it. It happens to be isometric, more or less, so it matches my diagonals nicely. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to turn the paper, right? Because then I can move my hand this way, and it's going to be a much, much easier ellipse to draw. Uh, again, it's nice to have your median lines, because then I know exactly where it starts and it ends. And again, I'm doing this really thick, but you probably don't want to since you're trying to keep your constructions light um, and do your real lines darker, okay? So, but anyway, now I'm just going to repeat that. Okay. So in this case, turning the paper is really advantageous because it keeps your hand just kind of going the same way. Let's pick my spots right there. Darken those again. Always do um, for your orthographic. The next drawing, you should probably use either the compass. But if the circles are too small, uh, in the in the orthographic, very likely you're going to have you know real circles, right? So either use a template or a compass. Um, and do your circles first, and then connect the, connect the circles with your straight lines. Okay. So now at this point, this is where the plane changes into a curve, and that's where you can show your contour lines just kind of lightly. Okay. Here it's going to be the tangent to this curve, so it goes like that. I'm just going to quickly. Now, say quickly is not good really because I don't know where I am. So the best thing really is to draw another square. And another positioning spot for that. There, much better. Even though all I'm left with when I'm done with this one is really just this little guy right here. Just that, right? Because it goes behind. So even though, even though I knew it just a little bit in this particular position, um, it helped to really make the entire circle, right? Okay, 
So again, these lines now would help in determining, you know, in showing that that's a curve, even though they may not be there in the real, in the real object. And if you were doing one with multiple rounding on all sides, um, again, you can just simply build it. I mean, once you get good at this, you don't have to do all that construction over and over again. You can just sort of wing it. But until then, it helps to do all this work. Um, there. So I just curved out my, my eighth of a sphere there. Here it's a little more complicated because uh, because first I have to do let's see that and then I have to do this and then I connect it. And the idea is that, you know, you're not doing a painting, right? So it's not like people are going to fault you for not being, like, super, super exact. And these are really meant to be sketches. sketch another drawing so you might have you know different views of it maybe a couple of um, orthographics um, etc you know maybe with some dimensions just kind of like in sketch form and then the next one is going to be your uh, orthographic right and for that we're going to put dimensions okay so now I'm just going to quickly show how to do dimensions um, so once again, even though, you know, you could say, well, you have to do it exactly like this and like this and like this, use common sense <clears throat> and use a certain kind of hierarchy. So if you have something, an extension line that's extending from a center line, uh, this is how it's drawn. So there's a little cross in the middle. And then once in a while there is a dash, once in a while, not, con not continuously. And that, that extension line, as you can see, crosses the object. Most other extension lines stop before they touch the object, okay? And how you do this differentiation, I, I should care, but it's really up to you because you might be good at using the same lead, you know, and then making thicker lines or darker lines and then thinner lines, or use, you know, harder and, and, and softer lead. Um, whatever you do, you should try to obtain this sort of differentiation, which is that the object has a, a very strong line, and then both the extension lines and the dimension lines are thinner than that, okay? Um, also, just, you know, if your drawing is this big, well, don't draw your arrows like so big just because proportion doesn't look so great. Uh, once again, do your arrows this shape, not that shape. Um, and they should touch. They should definitely touch the extension lines, otherwise there's no point, right? If it doesn't touch, then I don't know what that really means. Does it mean it's less? Um, if um, if there is no room to put a dimension, then you can put the errors on the outside of the extension lines. Now, don't do, and I know this is because in one of my examples, in one of the PDFs, uh, it was 
was linked to this, and that, that just doesn't make sense. So I apologize for that bad example, but, um, but the errors really should touch the extension lines, not be pointing to the number, unless they're like in this situation, where there is no room, okay? Generally, if you have a radius or a diameter, the uh, um, let's see, the arrow should be pointing to that curve, either from the inside or from the outside, and it should extend. If you were to extend it so that it touches the middle, the center of the circle, otherwise it looks funny. Like even this one, no, actually that looks right. Never mind. That does point to the center. Yeah, you can see here, it never touches, and it's always, I would say, maybe a sixteenth of an inch separated. Um, the uh, overall dimension usually is on the outside, right? And the partial dimensions are in the inside. Sometimes you might not have room, and also, of course, if you have a, you know, an orthographic that's like this, if you put an overall here, you don't need to put the same overall on top, right? Because it's, it's clear that that refers to the same thing. Um, uh, dimension arcs, I don't know that we'll even touch upon that, but... Um, again, you know, pretty straightforward. So the, the the arrow is pointing to the circle that's being dimensioned, in this case 5 eighths of an inch, um, and it's a diameter. So that little symbol means diameter, right? That is the distance from one side to the neck, to the other side, to the opposite side. Um, if you it's a radius, you would just simply say R. And if you have room, you could put the dimension of the radius actually inside the, uh, you know, inside the object that's being dimensioned, or in this case, outside since it doesn't fit. Um, so these are all different variations of of dimensioning that. Uh, in some cases, the diameter is shown as a, you know, as a line with errors. Uh, a lot of people use that system in the iPod orthographic and what it looked a little funny because it looked like it was a feature of the object. Yeah, so maybe one rule for picking the, sec sec the second object is that if you did an electronics thing, uh, like say an iPod, uh, you might want to do uh, something that's not electronic, like maybe a wrench. Okay, just to kind of get away from them. <laughs> um, and, and if you had an object that was like all curves, I don't know, maybe it was a mouse. Um, sorry. Thank you. Uh, maybe if it was a mouse all around it, well, do something that has, you know, straight lines. So maybe you might want to do like, you know, a key. A key is actually a nice one, and if you have like a fat one that has all the buttons from a car, that's that's cool because it's it's got you know some thickness to it. The key by themselves are a little thin, but um, so keys, wrenches, hammers are good. Because, oh gosh, 
that's called an elix, right? And actually an elix, it's a diagonal of a rectangle, so if I take this and I wrap it around, that thing is going to go like that, around it, and that's the true definition of a helix, and that's what you have in a screwdriver, I mean in a corkscrew opener thing. And to do that, it's really hard because you have to, you know, start out with ellipses and then you, you go, let's see, you go there, then you go to the next one there. Ah, so I have to practice this. Anyway, that's very adventurous, right? Doing a, a corkscrew. There's actually a drawing of it here. Uh, what's nice about it though is it is even, meaning it is um, right here. Yeah, basically it takes as a series of, ellip of ellipses and then you connect uh, points on those ellipses and you just keep moving them up and then you have to kind of approximate the curve that draws it. Okay, so let's um, let's stick to uh, uh, for the sketching to um, orthograph. I mean, uh, isometrics. Okay, let's not do. You know, if it's a key, don't worry about trying to make it in perspective. Okay, just make just keep it straight. You know, just keep all these lines parallel. All right, good. I think it's time for a break.